Hi, my name is Bryce, Esports Law Blum. My name is Crowen. Hey everybody, it's Frodan. I'm Riot Mort, Design Director on TFT, and we're finally here at the third big championship, the Reckoning Championship. And I'm excited to be back and bring you some more action. Right now, there is a wide diversity of talent across every region in TFT, and there's only so many spots, and so that skill gap can be really, really tight. I think that there's no real weak players that are coming to the World Championship, and Japan's no exception. They play on the Korea server. Korea is considered one of the major regions where competition is elite. And so if you're able to excel in that environment, you're a top tier level player in my opinion. North America has kind of become the central hub and that's where so much really high quality TFT is being played in the lead up to the world championship. EU has been one of the regions that just has a ton of great players. We see this every year. Like you look at their top 16, and you're like, all 16 of these players are great. I think the Korean qualifiers are overall really good, and Korea obviously as a region last year was was super strong and had the ultimate winner, so I expect them to be really good. And overall, it's been really exciting to see China really take production to the next level. And China is always the wild card because their meta is so different. I'm really impressed with the Chinese meta. It's so different from the way that the West likes to play. So I'm so curious to see how the clash of styles are going to meet. The styles between the regions can vary on a region by region basis, but also on a player by player basis. Any player that comes out of China is already a high quality player just due to the sheer volume. So Wanzi's already qualified for two world championships. The fact that he can qualify for three is just unheard of. Really excited to see Delicious Milk be a part of a world championship because he's been known as, you know, one of the greats, if not the greatest, at least in earlier sets of North American TFT. Milk is the kind of person that he'll find one or two comps that are really, really strong and just use those a lot. There is no doubt that when he's playing at his best, he is among, if not the very best player in North America. But will that milk show up? Only time is going to tell. Spencer got in on that crazy five turn egg, you know, barely made it in by a tiebreaker. Spencer's speed could prove the decisive advantage. He is capable of processing information so quickly that when he rolls, you almost can't see what's on the screen. Qualifying for world championships, he is certainly putting his name into this conversation as one to stay. From North America, obviously Robbins is coming in hot with that 1-1-1 lag 1-1 performance that he had. I think it's entirely possible that when we look back on the history of TFT, the feat that Robin just achieved will never be matched. That's never before been done. We might never ever see that again. And so if the question becomes, can a player like Robin Songs be able to put on a performance to win the World Championship, I think the results speak for themselves. For OCE, it's interesting. They only get one representative. And Esha has been around the scene for a long time. Bit of a memer. Most people know Esha for some of his dances or his crazy cosplays that he does on stream to entertain the fans. But when it came down to it, this man really busted out all the chops in order to qualify. He's a funny person, a great player, things that if you can bring that to a world stage and cement yourself as one of the best, like that is even better. And all the more reason why I'm excited to see Esha at this event. Any one of these players are very high skilled and could win this championship. Honestly, all of these players are going to be such similar skill levels that if some players just have a bit better luck in the day, that might be the difference. When it comes to the World Championship, you have to be able to adapt your playstyle both to how the lobby is, but also to what the point standings and the checkmate format lends itself to. There are so many moving parts to a set of TFT that early on in a set, it's going to be imbalanced. It's almost impossible to get it right early on. But by the time the regional championships roll around and Riot has had a good opportunity to observe what are kind of outliers in terms of their relative strengths to the rest of the pool of units, they pull it all back and it really rewards more flexible play. And the reality is no matter how good we are as developers, the players out there very quickly understand the game better than we do. And so it takes a bit of iteration to get it to that finalized, perfect state. And that's really fun to watch because again, it's sort of like what you always envisioned when you first started building the set coming to a head of like the final product. It's getting better and better every single time. And I do firmly believe that the set five championships will be the best TFT that we've ever seen. Like the bar just keeps getting raised and raised. With all the different play styles and with all the different regions, this is gonna be some of the highest level competition of TFT. And I can't wait to see what happens.